Hey there, YouTubers. Welcome back to another episode of Excel VBA is Fun. I'm Daniel Strong. Last time we filled a combo box, which is a drop-down menu with, uh, with certain things from our list of a sample database of suites. I've since expanded it, so what we're going to do is we're going to need to expand that in our... Uh, to get to the names... Um, what is it called? Names Manager. Alt I N D. Okay. We're going to extend the one called Suites List. Let's extend it to right here. All right, and we'll hit close. Oops. Yes, we want to save that change. All right. So if I click this filler, it's going to go through everything in the name range, and sure enough, it's taken everything that is what less than seven digits so we need to take that off there I wanted to share with you uh, in design mode uh, several more features that we did not discuss for the combo box okay so you have um, first of all if you didn't for some reason you didn't want to use this name box you could rename something right here in the name that's for many things right here in the properties also you will notice there's alphabetic and there's categorized Categorized has, uh, well, they're all sectioned off by category. Um, you can do it either way. You get used to it either way. Auto word select is on. So if I were to start typing um, C, uh, C A N, it would start trying to auto complete the word. Okay, let's go into some more details here. Let's see, you can set the back color. So you can change the background color to that, or you can even go into the palette and get real crazy with it. Same thing with the border color. And the four color is going to be your font color. So if you want to make your font really hard to read. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? Column heads. Typically, no. Uh, oh, column count. You can actually have two or five or ten columns going on here. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you're actually you're looking at a splitter that you can't see in the middle there. That's kind of one of the things I want to show you. I added another column here called rating. And so when, when we click this button to fill our combo box, I want it to, to say candy, and then I want it to say uh, whatever the number for number three, I guess three candy right here. When you make the selection though, it will only put the actual value back in here and put that in whatever cell you want it to. Also note that whenever you click here, you can hit the up and down arrow keys to affect those changes. Okay. What else? You Like I said, you can start typing um, oh, you notice that I was able to type anything I want here and it didn't autocomplete because it wasn't part of the list. That's one thing we need to go over when you're in the properties. By the way, to get to properties, I'm sure you know this, right click, go to properties. That's where we are here. Okay. For the combo box, what else? So, uh, and if you have more than one column, you can give it different amounts of widths. Uh, 50 pixels by 20 for the second column etc let's see uh, I want to talk about the where is it oh you can change the font been over that the height and the width and the left let's say left is how far it is from the left part of your screen so nope 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 okay list style plain list style option that's kind of boring but you can have options that doesn't do anything different except has a little circle there so let's take that and double click all right let's see okay here's what I was wanting to get at the style is important this is very important by default 
they are what's called a combo box. Why is it called a combo box? Well, because you can have a combination of either what's in the list, exactly the word cake or exactly the word donuts, or you could have a combination, meaning you could have the user could actually start typing and type something else, and it will allow that. Now, if you change it to just list instead of combination, a combo box, which is a combination of a list and user typed entries, if you change it just to a list, well, guess what? There's no type it in there. I'm trying to type right now. It'll only let you select from the list, nothing else. No custom typing, okay? That's the difference. A lot of people like to use a combo box, but if there's ever a time when you don't want anybody to accidentally have a typo in there, you might want to make it a list. I'm going to double click, change it back to combo box. A line left, a line center, a line right. You're all familiar with that. A lot of these, you don't have to click on this drop down thing. You can just double click and it'll help you toggle. Well, that's pretty much it. Like I said, with these directionals, you can change those by just type in, let's see, uh, 90. Okay, what about left? Where's left? Let's change this to 200. So, and we'll change it back to 175. So that's how you can kind of tell things if you know the place markers that you want. You have to just kind of approximate some of those. Max length is the only other one, really, we need to go over. That is, uh, I guess, infinite if you put zero. If you put six, then, the, then you can only have one, two, three, four, five, six digits or characters. So... That's how you can limit the number of characters somebody writes. So, thanks so much for watching. Um, in our next video, since we didn't have time in this one, next one we will actually make this a two-column combo box. So when they click this down, let's say it would say donuts would be the rating of five. So it, when you click the drop down, it would say donuts five. Um, but when you select it, the actual value of that row if you will, is only donuts, only in the first column of the combo box. Thanks for watching.